Welcome to a video about camera basics and how to use that DSLR camera that you have lying around. I'm going to go over some of the basic functions of the camera, how to use it, how to manipulate it, how to take advantage of a lot of what this camera can do. So let's get to it, shall we? The very first question I ask my students when we start talking about how to use this is whether or not they can name the main two mechanisms that control their cameras and allow them to take pictures. Do you happen to know what they are? They're the shutter and aperture. The aperture is in the lens. It is the opening in your lens uh, that allows light into the camera. And then the shutter is a mechanism that is in the body of the camera just behind the lens. In fact, if you take off the lens from your DSLR, you can see a little mirror in there. Behind the mirror is a little door that opens and closes that allows light into the camera. So both the aperture and the shutter are the two main mechanisms that you're controlling when you're taking pictures to get the perfect exposure. Aperture allows light into the camera based on the opening in the lens, how big or small that opening is. So as you change your aperture, the opening will get bigger, allowing more light to come in. If you close it, it shuts off the light. It's that simple. Aperture is equal to f-stop. So that number, that letter f that comes before the numbers, that's really important to be aware of. It's also equal to the lens opening, right? So the f-stop is equal to the focal length or aperture diameter, Big, how big and small the opening is in your lens. Uh, f-stop is also equal to aperture and depth of field, which is something we'll get into in a little bit. It's important to note that as each, as each number clicks over from f-stop 1.8, 2.8, 4, 5.6, every time you move over one, that uh, the amount of light that's coming in is actually doubling. Okay, so keep that in mind as you are learning to use this function in your camera. Something you should also be aware of with the aperture is that it's based on fractions. In fact, most of the numbers in your camera are based on fractions. So when you look at the f2 or f22, actually think of that as a one over two. Notice that F2 is a bigger opening than F22. And that is because a half is larger than a 1 22nd. Okay, so remember, it's a fraction. And this is gonna be very important when you learn about what else aperture controls just beyond how much light comes into the camera. So what else does aperture control? Well, it's not the evil empire, but it does apply to this picture here on the right of stormtroopers. Notice how one of the stormtroopers is in focus, but the rest of them are out of focus. What that is, depth of field. The area in front of and behind your main subject that is in sharp focus. So if you notice the pictures here of the flowers, you have one of the pictures, the one on the right, has a large depth of field. All of the flowers going back into space are in equal sharp focus versus the one on the left where you only have the 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 flower in the front being in focus and as you go back the flowers uh fade into the distance in terms of focus right so depth of field is the amount of area in front of and behind your main subject that is in sharp focus and it does not control the focus itself you still need to focus but it's about how much of the picture is going to be in focus that is your depth of field and aperture controls it you'll notice the image on the bottom there f32 corresponds to a large depth of field whereas f2 corresponds to a small depth of field and every time you notch over you're not only controlling how much light is coming in your camera or how little light is coming into your camera but you're also controlling the depth of field and a large depth of field is associated with an f32 you know, in F22, F16, those are all kind of large depth of fields, whereas F2, 2.8, 4, 5.6, those are smaller depth of fields, and they're going to only allow your main subject to be in focus with the rest of it being blurred out. And again, the other function that controls your camera besides aperture, which is in the lens, is your shutter, which is in the body of the camera. And that is a door that opens and closes. Shutter controls the amount of light that's coming into the camera based on how long the door is opened and shut. Again, these numbers are fractions, but they correspond to time rather than diameter. So if you see one over two, you're talking about a half of a second, whereas one over 125, which gets into a faster shutter speed range, is one over 125, one one twenty fifth of a second or one one thousandth of a second. We're talking very fast. 
in camera world, an eighth of a second is, is an eternity. Okay. So every time you notch over, you're increasing or decreasing the amount of time that that shutter is going to be open, which changes how much light comes into your camera within that amount of time. And we control these things with the dials on the camera here, but I'm going to go over that a little bit more in depth. Okay. Um, if you have a Nikon, that dial will probably be over here. Again, I'll bring that up in a second. What's really important to be aware of is that the shutter is inside the camera. Okay. It's behind the lens, as I showed you a moment ago. So if I open this up, right, take my lens off. You can see inside the camera that there is a little mirror right in here, okay? And when I click my shutter, that mirror has to get out of the way, go up, and then the door opens, and then it closes, and in the time that that door is open, light is coming into the camera and absorbing into your image processing chip, okay? What's important to be aware of is that when you're looking through your camera, you're actually looking straight out of the lens. This is what is called the mirror system. So you go into the viewfinder, it comes in, there's a mirror that goes down and then it hits that mirror and goes out, right? That mirror is blocking your image processing chip. And so it needs to move out of the way so that the shutter can open and light can get through. And that is again, so that when you look through this viewfinder, you're actually seeing exactly what's coming through the lens. A lot of cameras don't have that. Some are digitally based now, but they use a lot of power to do that. Not only does the shutter control the amount of light coming into your camera, but it also controls motion or has an impact on motion. So as you can imagine, the faster a shutter opens and closes, the quicker it freezes things in time. If it opens for a long time and something moves across the, the image processing chip, then that is going to be a blur in your imagery, okay? And a faster shutter speed corresponds to freezing motion. If you take a look at the images I have here for you, one one thousandth, if someone is running, they're gonna be frozen in time. If you get down to slower shutter speeds, like a 60th of a second, and you can pretty be sure that once you start getting around a 60th of a second, anything is going to be blurred. Like that's really one of your safe spots in terms of of, of getting blur in your in from your shutter. Uh, you also even wanna be aware of when you go below like a 30th of a second, that you're holding your camera extremely steady because even the motion blur from when you click your button can result in a blurry image. Okay, so you'll notice the pinwheel image here um, is spinning. If you shoot it at a 500th of a second, you're gonna freeze that motion. The slower you go, the more blur you're gonna get. So the shutter not only controls how much light is coming into the camera, but it also controls motion. Okay, so how do you control these things on your camera? It's very important to be aware of that there's a dial. If you're using a Canon, predominantly your dial is going to be here, right next to the shutter button. Okay, if you're on a Nikon, it's probably gonna be where your thumb is. The idea is that if you're right-handed, they don't make cameras for lefties, um, you hold the camera like this, your index finger can control the shutter while uh, your thumb can do the dial or you can use the, the index finger for your dial and also control the shutter and you need your thumb for another thing. And that's because when I'm in manual mode, right? we we'll talk about modes in a little bit. When I'm in manual mode, an M right here, manual priority mode, right? I control my shutter and my aperture. So I need to be able to control both of those things. And when I turn my dial right now, it's gonna control my shutter. And when you look on your screen, on the back of your camera, you will notice that you have a couple of things there, right? So you have one over 20. You should know that that is your shutter by now. The F 4.5 refers to your aperture. So when you wanna just control your shutter, you turn this dial, and that number will change, okay? That's controlling your shutter. Now, if I wanna control my aperture, I need to also simultaneously hold the aperture button. And that looks like right here in this image, you see the uh, turquoise arrow pointing to the little AV button. That should be by your thumb on a Canon. On a Nikon, that button is actually going to be near the shutter, okay? So you'll see it like right here on a Nikon. Okay, and the idea is, again, that you can control those two things at the same time. So when you wanna change your aperture, you hold that button, okay, at the same time as moving your dial. So when you do that, you'll see that your F number will change, okay? Holding the AV button at the same time or the little plus minus button on a Nikon, might not have the AV uh, marking, when you roll that now while holding that, you are actually changing your aperture. So let's get into playing around with aperture and shutter to see what it actually does. 
Okay, so let's do some playing around using the awesome Canon camera simulator that is available online. Uh, if you just Google that, you'll find it and you can kind of learn this and use it in, in any way that you want to use it to show other people, to help yourself understand the process. If I were taking a picture, uh, these are some of the things that would come up. First of all, let's take note of the image. We have a subject that is the plane with a propeller that's moving that can tie into shutter and motion. But then there's a lot of objects too, placed in different levels of depth from the foreground into the background. I have a lot of control over it. The other thing I wanna point out, which we haven't brought up yet, is the light meter. So when you are you, you know, when you are controlling how much light is coming in with the aperture and shutter, you're basically creating a balancing act of trying to get the appropriate amount of light for, the, for what light is available uh, in that environment that you're taking the picture of, right? So you want the balanced exposure, the right amount of light for that image. Your light meter, you know, you have a little dot here that moves around. You want it to basically be balanced in the middle at a zero. Some people like to go a little bit overexposed. Some people like to go a little bit underexposed. But let me show you what I mean really quick. So here you have your aperture. Here you have your shutter, okay? We'll talk about ISO in a moment. Um, so if I, if I open this up, right, if I go towards 4.5, you know, four, you'll notice that my light meter dot moved over to the plus three. This means that it's overexposed. So when I take a picture, it's going to be very bright. Okay. If I move that in the other direction, I'm closing up my aperture, right? I'm going to go to, let's say 22. And I take this picture now, you're going to see it's a lot darker. So it's underexposed. Okay. You'll, so the light meter here corresponds to the exposure and you're trying to get something more in the balanced range, right? So right about there. Um, so you also have your shutter. And again, when you're in manual mode, you have to balance this, you can balance this with your shutter. But let's just stick to aperture really quick for a second. So let me go to F4, you know, F4, which is going to give me a small depth of field and is letting in a lot of light. So I'm gonna actually increase my, sh my shutter speed to balance that a little bit to get it to the zero and take a picture. And right now what I want you to focus on is the depth of field. So let's take that picture. Notice how the, um, you know, the imagery here is you have a strong focus on the plane, but the images in the background are pretty blurred out. The images in the foreground are also very, you know, blurred out. Let's take another picture. Let's go to a large depth of field. So I'm going to go to 16 and I'm going to slow my uh, shutter down quite a bit to get the right amount of exposure. Again, I want you to pay attention to what the aperture change does to the image. Now notice that you have a much larger depth of field, right? Not only is the plane in focus, but so are the elements in the foreground and elements in the background. Okay, so that's a large depth of field. You can, you can see the other image to compare that. Again, we're trying to create a balancing act here. So let's just shift to shutter, okay? So let's pay attention to this propeller. Right now, again, I'm in, a, I'm in a slow shutter speed. You'll notice that I'm a 30th of a second, but let's actually go to a 60th of a second, which is a little bit more normal, so to speak. Uh, click that, you'll see like you can't even see the, the propeller. It's just too blurry. Let's take another one. Let's increase that shutter speed quite a bit. Let's go to, let's get a thousandth of a second and then let's open up our aperture quite a bit to get to a balanced exposure. Click that button. There you go. Notice that the you can see the propeller, although it's not 100% frozen in motion. That's because it's moving faster than a thousandth of a second. Okay, so if we want to capture that, we're going to have to really go fast with our shutter speed. Okay, but notice there's nothing I can do with my aperture to open that more up to let more light in to balance out that that uh, shutter speed. So what I have to do is the third thing. The third component is the ISO or film speed. This is how fast your camera absorbs light. The higher the number, the faster it's absorbing. So I'm going to increase that. And you'll notice that as I do that, my light meter balances the light. I take my picture. It doesn't even look like that propeller is, is moving anymore. I'm at a super fast shutter speed. I have a small depth of field though, but notice the grain in the image, okay? If I switch back to the last picture, see the difference? The quality is a little bit better, you can see. Let me try to do another image just to show you what's happening there. So I'm gonna go up a lot with my 
um, ISO. I'm going to take a picture. I'm again, I'm at a balanced exposure. So fastest ISO possible. Notice that grain. Again, compare that to this, which is more grain, right? We had a, a faster ISO than we did even in this picture. So look at this picture. Look how clean it is, how crisp it is. Where, look in the areas that are focused for that. And then notice the grain in this image. So that's a little bit about how to use these functions. But let's just talk about some of the modes in the camera before I let you get go out there and start taking pictures. Let's talk about some of the modes on your camera. Again, if you're using a Nikon or a Canon, it's going to be a little bit different. But if you notice, of course, up by your finger, your index finger, whenever you are turning on your camera, um, you have some different modes that you can use there, right? And there's an image up here, right, that you can see as well. And let's just go through a couple of those really quick. So M, that's manual. That means that you have to control the aperture and shutter all at the exact same time. And you're going to use your light meter to balance that light out to figure out where you're at on your exposure. When I'm in that mode, I turn on my camera, you'll see what I'm set at. And if I turn my dial without hitting any buttons, I'm controlling my shutter speed, right? So I'm getting faster and faster actually, okay? And you'll notice that, you know, your light meter is saying, I am way underexposed. I need a lot more light. So if I do that I, and I tap my button a little bit, you can see also I have my ISO set to automatic, which is helping, but you can see that light meter moving around, okay? But let's say I want to open up my aperture. Well, then I need to push that little button right here at the same time that I am moving the dial. And again, if it's on a Nikon, it's switched. It's by your index finger or your thumb, right? So I'm gonna hold this button and I'm gonna roll the dial. And then what's gonna happen is I'm going to see my f-stop change. Okay, so I'm gonna open that up quite a bit, roll it on over, and you see I have a balanced light situation, right? My SO is also set to auto, which is very important. Most cameras have it at some point on the back, push that button, you get some options. You can scroll over, you know, or back and forth, kind of changing that. Honestly, especially in the beginning, I really suggest you use automatic. Your camera is pretty good at figuring that out for itself, okay? You'll notice that um, in this image here, the ISO is set to 100. It is a balanced uh, exposure and it's at 1 20th of a second f4.5. That's how you do that. You're going to be balancing your shutter and aperture to try to get that exposure right. Obviously, now you know what's going to happen in your, in your images beyond just being exposed uh, properly for that that space and imagery. Let's go to the next mode on the on the dial, AV. This makes more sense on Nikon, it's actually an A. Uh, that stands for aperture priority. So if you have your camera on and you hit the aperture, go to aperture priority, you're gonna see it says aperture priority, right? So now you'll notice when you roll the dial that it's kind of highlighting your, um, your aperture, your f-stop, and just changing that. The camera is doing the rest of the work for you. I like to refer to the aperture priority and then shutter priority as training wheels because the camera is doing a lot of the work for you. So you get to learn how to use aperture without having to worry about necessarily the exposure situation. But you should be aware that when you go to like a, a wider open aperture that you're gonna be increasing the speed of the shutter most likely and some of the results that will come out of that. So I like to have my students use aperture priority in the beginning because it allows them to control depth of field, which nine times out of 10 is actually gonna be more important for the pictures that they're taking um, in the beginning of a class. So. Um, that's aperture priority. Moving along, TV stands for shutter priority. You might not know based on the TV, but that's what it is. So if I go to um, manual, right, I got aperture priority and shutter priority. Now you'll notice that if I turn my dial, it's only impacting my shutter. It's And then my my camera is controlling the rest of it on its own. Okay, then you have P for programming. Um, you're definitely not gonna be using that in the beginning. You have for automatic uh, plus, it's like a smart automatic mode. Um, you could do a no flash mode. You also probably have a button somewhere on your camera that has the flash button. If you're ever having issues with the flash popping up or not popping up, you pr definitely wanna like use that. 
getting into the different modes that you have in terms of like uh, the, the images, right? So the woman's head refers to portrait mode. That's pretty obvious. The mountain refers to landscape. Uh, the flower refers to macro. Uh, the running person is like sport mode. So your motion and then nighttime uh, portraits and of course video if your camera has video. Portrait mode. Portrait mode is going to be more interested in aperture, your depth of field. So it's gonna probably give you a smaller depth of field. Why? Because when you're taking a picture of a person, you probably wanna blur out the background. Your subject is the person, the background isn't necessarily as important. So it's giving you a smaller depth of field. It's mainly focused on your aperture. Whereas the landscape mode, mountain, right, is trying to give you a large depth of field, lots of focusing range, because you're taking a picture of a landscape and everything that goes into space very far away, and you want to have all of that in focus. So those two modes particularly are worried about your aperture versus not as interested in your shutter. They're not assuming that you're taking pictures of something that's moving. Macro mode is going to give you a very super small depth of field, and it's gonna allow you to kind of focus a little bit closer on things, to get a little bit closer, because every lens and camera basically has a range with which it can focus on distance in terms of like how far away you are from it. The running person, again, is motion. This is the one that's gonna correspond more to your shutter. It's more worried about the fact that you're probably taking a picture of something that's moving, and you need a fast shutter speed in order to, to capture it. So it's gonna give you a faster shutter speed, the fastest shutter speed that it can possibly give you. Last nighttime portrait is kind of trying to balance the fact that A, you are going to be at night, people, you don't want it to move. So it's trying to balance those things as best as possible in that kind of scenario. What's cool about knowing how these things work and why they work in the way that they do is you can kind of use it in a way to like kind of hack, avoiding using aperture priority and shutter priority. Because um, if you go to portrait mode, you know you're gonna get a smaller depth of field. If you go to landscape mode, you know you're gonna get a larger depth of field. If you go to sports mode, you know that you're going to get uh, a faster shutter. So you can kind of use it in that way to get the results that you want. Okay, lastly, the last thing you need to really quickly know about is the lens it has some options for you as well. So first of all, go to the side of your lens right here. You'll notice there is a little AF, right, and MF. Those stands for automatic focus or manual focus. When you are in automatic focus, AF, and you just press down a little bit on the shutter, not all the way, you will notice it focuses and you will hear it. And when it beeps like that, it means it has focused, okay? And when you do that, when it when it locks, it is locked on that focus. So if you turn a little bit, move side to side, it's gonna stay locked in that area and then you can click all the way through to kind of make that happen. That's automatic focus, right? The camera focuses for you, you see that lens moving, okay? Then there's MMF, switch to MF right there. And now you are in control of it. So if I push down a little bit on my shutter, nothing happens, I have to do it, okay? Make sure that if you are an AF, do not force this. You will break your lens, okay? So now you have to look through the viewfinder and you have to focus for yourself. You'll see things blurring in and out. You're relying on your eyes, not the image uh, sensing chips in your camera. So when you're in automatic focus, you still have some options about how your camera focuses. It has, what is it focusing on, right? Is it focusing on everything? Is it trying to make a, a guess on what you want focused or is it in a specific area of the photograph? So if you look over here, there's a button. Um, again, this is gonna be different on a Nikon or a Canon. Um, there's a little button around that area on most cameras. Uh, this one is right here on the edge, right? And you'll see that it looks like a little, little kind of meter, right? It kind of resembles the meter here. When you click on that button, click on that button, and you'll see you get some options. And if you go here, you can move your focusing set all over the area. You can go down, up. So if I go up like this and I leave it there, it's going to focus at the top of the image. If I go down to the side, it's gonna focus on that side of the image when I'm taking a picture, okay? And then if I'm in the middle, it'll be focused in the middle. If I hit set, it goes to automatic selection, okay? So the camera is basically gonna look at your image and try to decide what, you, what it thinks you wanna focus on. And you'll notice when you look through the viewfinder and you do that, you'll see some red dots. The red dots that are blinking are telling you 
and they look just like this. They're dots, but the, this is black. They'll be red in the image. They look just like that. It's telling you where it's focusing. So if you click the button and you move it to focusing maybe on the, the right side of the image, you just click it there and you leave it, okay? Don't hit the set button, it'll go to automatic. Just let it go out. Now that's where it's focusing. When I go and I click, you'll see it's always focusing on the one side um, that you just set it to, okay? So you also have control over how you focus your camera and a good, most good pictures have strong focus. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a bunch. Now get out there as soon as possible and start practicing all these different modes. Cheers.